a scheduled planning commission meeting for the city of Placerville, uh, August 20th, 2013. And uh, I'd like to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we can have a roll call, please. Chair Briggs. Here. Vice Chair Russell. Here. Member Lowry. Here. Member Drobish. Here. Member Friend. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item three, which is the consent calendar. All items listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted by general consent unless any commissioner requests a roll call vote or unless any member of the commissioner staff wishes to remove an item for discussion. The reading of the full text of all resolutions will be waived unless a commission member requests otherwise. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt the consent calendar? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The consent calendar, consent calendar is adopted. Item four, which is items removed from the consent calendar, that's none. Uh, item uh, five, which is items of interest to the public. Uh, the planning, uh, this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the planning commission. State law prohibits the commission from acting on items not listed on the agenda except by special action of the planning commission under specified circumstances. The chair reserves the right to limit the speaker's time to three minutes. The chair will recognize the speaker and ask that they state their name for the record, personal attacks on individuals or comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal privacy will not be tolerated. Do we have any items of interest to the public? Seeing none, we'll close that item and move on to item six, which is communications. Do we have any communications? We have none from staff. Okay, great. Uh, we'll move on to item seven, which is new business. I have to <coughs> recuse myself from this item because it's uh, part of the property owned by my grandfather and also my client. Turn it over to com uh, Commissioner Russell. Who has the uh, staff report on this one? Uh, thank you, Here. Vice Chair Russell, uh, Pierre Rivas, uh, Development Services. I'll, I'll give the staff report on this. Um, this is a finding of general plan consistency. It's a request that was made by the County of El Dorado that the uh, Placerville Planning <coughs> Commission make a finding pursuant to uh, State Government Code 65402B that the proposed future development of a court facility upon property within the city limits is in conformity with the city's general plan. Uh, the project site is generally located adjacent to the existing El Dorado County Jail at 300 Forney Road, and that's assessor's parcel numbers involved are 325-300-02 and-32. Um, this action is exempt from the Environmental Quality Act, uh, presumed the 15060C3, the California, uh, the California Environmental Quality Act, and that this is not a project under the meaning of the, <coughs> of the law. Um, to give you a little background, uh, Government Code 65402 uh, basically states that a county shall not acquire or dispose of any real property in any city if such city has an adopted general plan, which the city of Placerville does, until the location, purpose, and extent of such acquisition or disposition has been submitted to and reported upon the planning agency as to the conformity with said adopted general plan. Uh, the county did make a formal request uh, by letter dated July the 23rd of 2013, and that's contained as Exhibit E in your staff report. And it describes, uh, uh, th with, with that, it describes the transaction for the county's, uh, or actually it would be the state, the future Placerville uh, Courthouse. Um, just in, in brief, and you can refer to Exhibit C in your <coughs> staff report. Exhibit C will, will, will show you the boundaries of the two properties that are involved. Uh, basically a property that's owned by the County of El Dorado, and that's the property that currently houses the existing jail facility. And then another piece of property that's owned by the Briggs Family Trust. And what the, what's being proposed is the county will 
uh, in trade, give the Briggs Family Trust uh, approximately 5.2 acres of property, it's undeveloped, and then in exchange, then the county would acquire 5.2 acres from the Briggs Family Trust, and then combine that with approximately two and a half acres of, of the site that contains the jail, and then eventually that will be then disposed of and provided to the state of California for the future courthouse. Um, if you look at the general plan exhibit, uh, the property that would be provided to the Briggs Family Trust is owned public facilities. Uh, there is no proposal to develop that prop, uh, property at this time by the Briggs Family Trust. Um, at such time then uh, they, could per they could submit an application to develop the property, which probably would include a general plan amendment to change it from public facilities to some other suitable uh, land use designation, probably would be commercial. Um, the adjoining, the, the property that the county would be acquiring is, uh, has a general plan land use designation of, of commercial. And just in brief then, it is, it, is, it is staff's opinion that these land transactions are consistent uh, <coughs> with the city's general plan. Um, we've outlined the analysis uh, in your staff report and staff is recommending that the Planning Commission find the proposed land transaction between the County of El Dorado and the Briggs Family Trust and between the County of El Dorado and the State Administrative Office for development of the new Placerville Courthouse facility is consistent with the applicable policies of the adopted City of Placerville General Plan in accordance with Government Code Section 65402. And just for your information, because this is a it's a more obscure section of the government code. I did provide you a copy of that section of the code. Uh, the city is required to report back uh, to, to the applicant, this case, the county of El Dorado, uh, within 40 days. If we fail to do so, then the finding of consistency will be deemed automatically in full compliance with the general plan. And that <coughs> concludes staff's report. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have at this time. We do have um, Kelly Webb from the County of El Dorado, and she's here <coughs> representing them, and she could probably answer any other questions you have as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Uh, one I had was hearing that it doesn't, this is just a formality, a yes or no vote has no bearing. Is that true? You know, it's difficult to answer that. I, I attempted to do a legislative search and determine the history of why the state legislature at some time passed this, because it doesn't apply to the, to the state itself. It just applies to counties and cities. So whenever there are these tran uh, transfers of property, be it, be it undeveloped property or be it a building, this 65402 <coughs> finding is, is required prior to you know, a county or city acquiring the property. So it's still pretty early in the process. And so this would be the first step then, at least one of the hurdles that the county would have to pursue. But once they have this or the 40 days passes, then they can move forward with uh, um, the, tran the property transaction. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, if that's all the questions we have, well, I guess we can open the public hearing. <clears throat> on this matter, is there anybody that wishes to speak uh, to the to the uh, project? Would any of the commission have a, a question? I understand there's a rep from the uh, the county. Would any questions for for that person? Uh? I'll ask one. <laughs> <coughs> Um, how far along is the CEQA process for this project? Where, um, what stage is it at? Well, the project, uh, the process, the CEQA process is underway. However, we have been stalled for several months pending state budget issues. So we had started the process last fall. It came to a halt, and we just, in the last three months or so, have really started discussions with the state again. So they are in the process of regrouping and pulling all their information together. Um, I don't, didn't bring with me their current schedule, otherwise I could tell you, but um, they are working on that and we're hoping to get a meeting together with them very shortly to determine what the actual um, 
dates are going to be to roll out that, that whole process. And I believe that we could probably have them come and talk with you at some point if, if that's what you'd like. Are you aware of any plans whatsoever for the Main Street Courthouse? Um, at this point, no. There, it was um, part of our discussions early on and how we would um, handle that. At this point, um, we have the Building C property that the state currently owns, which is a joint, um, it's a county building that um, because of some state legislation, the county had to provide um, space in that building to the state that the courts already occupied. Um, so one of our objectives with this project is to exchange the land for space in Building C, and then the courthouse on Main Street is also a part of that consideration. But because we've had such a delay in our process, we really need to go back and revisit the values on the buildings and see <clears throat> if, where we're at in terms of a um, exchange. So who actually controls Main Street Courthouse building and property? There is a transfer of responsibility in place that um, because of a seismic issue, the county was not able to fully transfer that building over to the state. However, they um, are responsible for the maintenance and, and control um, you know, any repairs and things like that that actually occur with that building. So it's kind of a, a shared responsibility in a sense, but for the most part, they are responsible for the majority of the upkeep at this point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Vice Chair Russell, if staff could just add a few uh, sure. comments to, to, to the question. Um, there was a notice of preparation of environmental impact report and an initial study that was uh, prepared for the administrative <coughs> office of the courts. And this document is dated April of 2012, and the comments on that ended in May 22nd of 2012. So at least that's the last actual document that was circulated for public review and comment. Uh, they will be preparing an EIR, uh, but, but we have yet to see an administrative draft. But we can certainly contact them and try and get a schedule and a report back to you at your next meeting if, if, if you would like. <coughs> I'm curious about this, the seismic issue. Now, do I understand that seismic retrofits were not able to be completed for because of uh, budgetary constraints or engineering impossibility? Or um, well, the the state really did the seismic um, evaluation on that building a number of years ago, and through the um, process of transferring the building, that was brought up as an issue. Um, the state was prohibited from taking um, <coughs> control of that building based on some other legislation that exists. I think it's SB 10 or, or something like that. Um, so it was just written into the agreement that the county would have to maintain it for seismic um, uncertainty, if you will, for a period of 25 years. But other than that, the state has um, maintain maintenance and control of the building. So it's really just a formality that was um, kind of one of those obscure things like Pierre was referencing that came out through the legislation. Thanks. Yeah, Vice Chair, if I may, um, staff would just point out that the, you know, the topic in regards to the existing main courthouse on Main Street is not germane to this particular item. <clears throat> it's not on the agenda. I understand that. We're still all very interested, though, in the future of, yeah. of that building. Uh, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else uh, of the public wishes to speak on this matter? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the uh, commission <coughs> for our action. there's no other discussion perhaps someone would like to uh, move that we move this forward <clears throat> I, 
I'd be happy to make the motion, um, but I'm still not quite fully skilled on all the verbiage required to make <coughs> an official motion. So um, I guess my motion is that uh, we uh, accept the uh, findings of staff and uh, pursued, uh, proceed with the uh, approval of this item. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> uh, second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, I'll call for the vote. Member Lowry. Aye. Member Drobish. No. Vice Chair Russell. Aye. <coughs> <clears throat> Point of order. Uh, who made the motion? Who made the second? Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, with that, I believe we can re bring our chairman back. Uh, 